Hello, I'm Orson Welles. What follows is a terrifying journey into the world of magic, mystery... Yeah, no, it's not. Procedures. Procedures for episode 5 of the Sword of the Long. What is a procedure? Functions are procedures. Methods are procedures. Subroutines are procedures. You have used them. You kind of have an idea of what they do. Some routine calls the procedure. The procedure does work and it returns to the caller. It is the caller's responsibility to provide the arguments the procedure needs and to transfer control over to the procedure. It is the procedure's responsibility to acquire the resources it needs to perform its duties, perform the operation, and place the results in a place where the caller can access them. Now in assembly, we run into a problem where we simply do not have enough registers to store all of the local variables and all of the past arguments that need to be sent to various functions, and especially recursive functions, you simply do not have enough space in the registry. So, the only solution is to store them in the memory. But how are you going to do that while keeping it all under control and keeping tabs on everything? You create a stack. Last in, first out, stack. And that stack has all the normal procedures, allocate, deallocate, push, pop, etc., etc., has all of the normal stack functions. And in that stack, you have a set space where each procedure can store all of its stuff. Each procedure can store its registers and the local variables that it needs to in that frame that is allocated. Please note that the way we draw this, the top of the stack is actually downward, and the bottom of the stack is actually upward. And the caller's stack frame is above the procedures, the called procedures stack. The procedures stack frame is bound by two register values, uh, FP and SP. It is in between those two register values. These are called frame pointer and stack pointer. Now, both the caller and the called procedure have responsibilities. These are the responsibilities of the caller and what it will do in the MIPS architecture. So pause the video and read them. And then here are the procedures for the called procedure. And these are the things that it will do as well. And so you can translate this uh, into actual code, or you can look at example code. What I find best is that you can just look at an example code, see what uh, example programs are doing and how they're doing it, understand how they're doing it, and then write your own code. That's the simplest way. That concludes episode five and this first batch of videos. Now all I have left to do is to go through homework five with floating point representations, and latches and flip-flops. Wait, that's terrible. I quit. Just a handful for the road. Oh, what luck. There's a French fry stuck in my beard.